All right, we are now going to talk about the second way that you can avoid plagiarizing, which is paraphrasing, where you are putting more specific points that the author uses into your own words. So let's look at how that's done. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do to practice paraphrasing is take a few minutes to read the daily life of a sumo wrestler. So that is in your summary paraphrasing and quoting lesson materials. It's an article. If you'll go in and pause this video and go ahead and read through this article, it should just take you about five minutes or so. So pause here, take a moment and give that a read. Okay, hopefully if you are back, you have read this article and now you're ready to do a little bit of paraphrasing work. So let's think of a scenario here. Imagine Eva who has to paraphrase a part of this. So here's Eva. And Eva is supposed to create a presentation about sumo wrestlers and this article is going to be one of her sources. One of the things that she wants to include is a list of things the wrestlers do in their training sessions. In this article, the author has already given a good list, so she's just going to paraphrase that, and she's paraphrasing this one little section here. So what she'll do when she paraphrases is to use the same idea, but she won't use the same exact language word for word as the article. Okay, so here's how the two compare. This is the article's language. The wrestlers stretch, then do hard physical training for three to four solid hours. Their regimen includes drills, weightlifting, and going head to head in their own wrestling matches. A typical training can last up to four hours and involves stretching, drills, weightlifting, and practice matches. Okay, so Eva didn't copy the exact words, but the idea is pretty much the same thing. If you look at the article uh, write-up and then look at Eva's paraphrasing, it's pretty much the same. So because the idea really came straight from that article, Eva should give credit to the author. And she can do this in a couple of ways. At the beginning of her paraphrase, she can say, according to writer Jason Morey, comma, a typical training can last up to four hours and involves stretching drills, weightlifting, and practice matches. Or, just like we saw with the summary writing, we can do this in his article, The Daily Life of a Sumo Wrestler, and insert the title there. Jason Mori explains that, and then give the same information from the paraphrase. So now, let's have you try it. Let's write a sentence where we paraphrase the wrestler's early morning activities. This is in the section just above the part where Eva paraphrased. So remember that you need to give the credit author the give credit to the author by listing their name or the article title. You can do it before or after the paraphrase, just like we saw in the summary writing exercise. Take a minute, if for whatever reason you're home today and you weren't with us doing this in class, pause the video and write your paraphrase. Okay, if you are back to this video now, hopefully you have tried out your paraphrasing and if you struggled with that, this sheet that is in the Blackboard weekly folder under all those materials for this lesson will show you more ways that you can paraphrase. It gives you some sentence starters to help you out and it gives you some examples of what that could have looked like. If you were working with us uh, in class today and you're just reviewing, our group went back and hopefully compared sentences. And I asked everyone to check and make sure that everyone gave credit to the author. That's really important in paraphrasing. And if you didn't do this, everyone should be able to help each other figure that out and then revise until your group had it right. If you were not in class with us today, you're going to want to go self-check that 
you used your own words, but the ideas were very specifically connected to that part of the text, and that also that you made sure that you gave credit to the author. Okay, so now, what do you do if you want to use the author's exact words? That's going to be covered in exercise number four under using direct quotes. So when you're ready, if you are not with us at, in class today, you can go ahead and find this next exercise where we'll talk about how you do that without plagiarizing. Okay, we'll see you there.